Hello everyone. Catching and smoking lake trout is one of my favorite things to do in the winter. Well, along with eating smoked lake trout, of course. Today I'm going to show you my favorite smoking method. It's not only simple, but cheap and most importantly, delicious. Every fish recipe starts with a fishing trip and hopefully a fish. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, a little bigger than five, I think, but now that is just perfect smoker size. <laughs> Next, you need something to smoke it with, and that's where alder comes in. So this here is speckled alder. It's about as good as a smoking wood as I've uh, as I found. Um, you can identify it by the fact that it generally grows along the sides of. Uh, you can see all kinds of it here. It generally grows quite close to the water um, in these dense little clumps, and they, they never get all that big. Um, you can see, you know, your average size here is only about that big around. So this stuff here is actually dead, which is actually which is fine. The nice part about this smoking recipe is you don't have to have all of your measurements exactly and it's extremely uh, easy and it's extremely uh, simple. Um, it's about as simple as you're going to get. And I don't know, about that much, like I say, I don't measure anything. What you do want to make sure of is you have a little more sugar than you have salt. So I have about a cup and a half of sugar. I got some brown sugar and white sugar. I haven't noticed much of a difference one or the other. And I've got just a little less than a cup of the kosher salt. So I just combine those into the hot water and stir it in. What you're trying to do is, is completely saturate whatever water you have and whatever amounts of salt and sugar you have. You're just trying to saturate that water so it can't hold anymore. I've boiled the water so it uh, helps it dissolve a little better, but basically if I'm stirring and I stir and stir and I notice that there's still a little bit left in the bottom, that's perfect. It means the water's basically reached maximum saturation. You just want it really salty and really sugary. So next I'm just going to add a bit of soy sauce, again, about that much. I think it just gives it a little bit of extra depth of flavor. Um, the rest is really optional and up to you because it doesn't really impart too much flavor. But I'm going to put some onion powder and some garlic powder in. It, it, just, it just gives you a little bit more flavor and again I'm not, I'm just going to shake some in. It's not really, it's not really all that critical. Experiment with this part and, uh, and see, what, uh, see what you like the best. This just gives it a tiny bit more. Flavor. So I'm going to say a couple of teaspoons of each and I've got, I don't know, about a liter of water in there. So I'm going to mix this all and uh, hopefully it will dissolve most of the salt and the sugar. So what I've made here is a uh, just a very, very basic brine um, that I'm going to soak the fish in overnight. But I'm not going to put the fish in it while it's still hot. I'm going to put this outside to cool off since it's winter and I'll catch you uh, after it's cold. Now that it's... Oh look. Kia the dog has been guarding the brine. Kia, say hello. It's a good brine. Yeah, so now it's cold, we can bring it inside. All right, so now the brine is pretty cold. Um, I'm gonna put the, just submerge the fillets in it. Um, obviously there's still bones in it here now. I take those out after it's smoked. It's just so much easier to do with uh, tweezers later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and soak these, submerge these in it. Cut the fillets in half to make it a little easier. Um, this amount of brine you could probably do even more, uh, more than this one fish with, but I'm just going to leave it at the one. I also just take a plate and put a plate on it just to get the, uh, just to get it kind of soaked down in a little bit so it's all well covered. At this point, I'm going to put it in the fridge for uh, somewhere between eight and twelve hours um, and pull it out, and then we'll go on to the next step. So I've now taken the fish out of the fridge, rinsed it all thoroughly to uh, to get all the excess brine off. I've patted it, patted it pretty dry with a paper towel, and it's been drying here for about four hours. So now it's time to put it on the smoker. The next step, just to put it on the racks here. Now 
the smoker is pretty basic. It's just an old Bradley that uh, a friend gave me with a burned out burner. I put a hot plate down here on the bottom and I just use a stainless steel dog bowl with uh, wood chips in it. And these are locally harvested alder chips. So I'm gonna load that up and get this thing fired up. And we will set it on, I'm gonna set it on medium for right now. This little, little hot plate does, uh, does regulate the temperature quite well. So I'm gonna turn it on high for just a second to get things warmed up. And when I leave, I'll turn it back on medium. This little, uh, this bit of chips here, this will last probably three or four hours. And then I'll be back and I'll refill it. And uh, usually refill it two or three times. And then uh, uh, depending on how, how it goes, I just, I moisten the chips just ever so slightly. It helps with flare ups, which you don't want to avoid. So. Um, yeah. Well, see how it goes. All right, so after a few hours, things are looking darn good. Refill and uh, give her another couple hours. All right, so dripping wet here. So we've got it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna take these top ones here. I've got this uh, honey salsa that I'm going to be using for a glaze today. The salsa looks good. It's got lots of uh, lots of seeds and things in it. It's got a really sort of a nutty flavor, so I can't wait to uh, can't wait to try that. Let's see what that's gonna be like. Hopefully, it's my new favorite. <laughs> And back in for another short jaunt. Oh man, it's okay. All right, so we have our smoked fish hot off the smoker here. We've got the stuff with the honey glaze, which I'm pretty excited to try. And we've got the regular stuff, which is, uh, I, this is what I've been doing most of the time. As you can see, it's nice and tender all the way through and juicy and uh, great color on the outside. That's, that's just gonna be delicious, but I'm extra excited to try this. Before I dig in though, I didn't debone this before I uh, before I put it on the smoker because I find it a lot easier just to find that row of bones. The meat retracts slightly. You can find all the tips of the bones and and they're easy to just pull out with the tweezers because it's uh, and you can you can kind of find follow your way along so you don't miss any. Yeah, so I just go ahead and, and pull these out with the uh, with the tweezers and it actually works pretty good. And if you go sort of flake by flake, you can pull them all out, get them all out, and not have to worry about those uh, pesky bones and you're trying to enjoy some fish. So, let's dig in. All right, I'm just gonna take a piece right off the back part here. Oh man. Look at that, tender and juicy. All right, here we go. I could literally live on this. That's quite possibly the best fish I've ever eaten. Wow. Amazing. So smoking doesn't have to be all that difficult. As you can see, mine didn't cost me any, really any money at all. $5 for the hot plate and a, a donated box. You can make one out of a, out of a fridge, out of a, a, out of plywood. You can nail one together. Um, doesn't have to be that complex. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's bloody delicious. So. Uh, here we get any lake trout. Uh, try it out yourself. This is After Work Outdoors. Till next time.